Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and right here, right here is my Prusa i3 Mark II 3D printer. No, this isn't the fully assembled version of the printer that I received. This is the kit that Joseph himself helped me unbox in my garage. I got it together, and there's a few things I want to tell you about the build process. It's kind of cool. I thought you should know, so let's do this. Are you ready? Go. Ah, welcome back, and welcome back to my Prusa build kit. I know Joe said he didn't think I'd get it done in time, and he gave me a, a hard time because I just didn't have time to put it together, but sure enough, I put it together, and I time-lapsed the whole thing, and it's a pretty good time-lapse. I'll play that here in a little bit, but uh, there was a few things I really wanted to talk about of the build process here because... Even though I used the online instructions, which I think were better than the printed manual, they are still revisioned, so they always include updates. And I've got, I think, two things that they should be updated with. Let's, let's get started. The first thing that I think should be updated has to do with the smooth rods that go into the Z motor mounts. And there's a small hole to put the rod in. And in order to fit the rod into the hole, I had to use flush cutters to trim the side of the hole so that the plastic could expand a little bit and accept the smooth rod. I, it didn't say that in the manual, and I was pushing pretty hard to try to get it to mount into that hole, but it wasn't going to go. So I did have to use my flush cutters to trim the little side, and that let it open up a little bit, and then the smooth rod could fit in. And, and as you can see, it, it works right here, and it works right there. So, yay. The second thing that I think needs a little bit more clarification is the location of the nuts on the threaded rods underneath the printer itself. The instructions said to mount the nuts about 100 millimeters away from a certain point at the end of where the rods were mounted. And I, well, I have calipers and I tried to use those, but it didn't work out too well. I thought I'd measured pretty close and I, I double checked and I even triple checked, but apparently that wasn't enough and I was off, which meant when the printer was fully assembled, I had to turn it on its side and I had to adjust the nuts to make sure that the, uh, the gantry could move back a little bit because what happens is the power supply itself attaches to the gantry and then the power supply has a small little foot that attaches to the Y-axis brace on the outside. And that's why you need that 100 millimeters. So my suggestion really is to, instead of having to measure 100 millimeters, or if you still want to implement 100 millimeters for measuring, what you should do is when you test fit it, actually hold up the power supply to make sure that the screw holes line up. I think that would be a really easy step to add, and I think it would really solve a lot of problems. Once the printer was all together and configured, I was able to print out some models, and the first one I printed out was this frog, and it turned out really good. The back was really smooth, and this is in the Rapunzel Silver. Joe's favorite color, as he says. It's a really cool color. It's got some shine and some sparkle to it. Uh, the frog turned out great. Next up was the dragon. Look at this. It's interesting. The, the hole from the mouth goes all the way down to the tummy. So uh, you could fill it with orange juice, then you could have the dragon spit orange juice. But it's, it printed fine as well. It's an incredibly beautiful model. And the, the Rapunzel filament, Rapunzel silver, I think it was, really brings out the detail. Uh, the, the tummy and the bella area is nice. The wings are good and the tail printed just perfect. This is a really cool model. I don't know which model this is. I'm really sorry, but it just exists on the SD card. It was one of the models to try out. Now that the kit's together, I have the kit to compare against the fully assembled unit and they both print nearly identical. The only way I can really tell them apart is Joe's signature right here on the gantry. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the fully assembled MK2 and the kit version that I built myself. The instructions I thought were, for the most part, pretty straightforward. I know they go through revisions, so hopefully my additions to those instructions make it in at some point. If you have any questions about this machine or the build process, you can leave them down below or try to contact me. I can't get to everybody, but I can do my best to help you along or possibly point you in the right direction. And this whole entire process was filmed at a time lapse. And if you're interested in seeing that, you can go right here. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up if this was interesting. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com. Hug each other more often. I love you guys. As always, high five.